Hi folks and welcome to the second video in this week's series of mixing with stop plugins. Today we're going to have a look at the uh, the drums. Now before I forget and I did forget to mention this in yesterday's video one of the reasons why I have the stem mixers a it's <laughs> depending dependent on the uh, on the band or the client if they want to use this for remixes and uh, they, they want to put different drums and just use bass guitar and vocals etc we can send a mix out with out the drums and just the other instruments but another thing it's also handy for soloing out the drums <laughs> or well soloing out the drums the bass guitars vocals etc so we've got the um, the drums soloed out there so let's have a quick listen to the drums they're a pretty decent sounding set of drums anyway i don't know whether these were recorded in glenn's studio or whether they were recorded at the actual drummer's home studio i don't know have a look at first is these toms let's just solo these toms out at the minute so as you can see we've got a lot going off here on the toms or what looks like a lot going off but what that actually is it's because these are real drums this is bleed from the rest of the kit so there's a couple of ways of going about this you can either pop a gate on which yeah i sometimes do but what i tend to do is i'll edit these toms so i would just look for the uh, for the loudest hits on these that's the tom itself so what i'll do is i'll edit these toms so all we need is cut that up roughly i think that's the only bit of tom we've got in there yep so we'll delete that delete that and then next thing I'll do is I'll put some auto fades in so you can either right click and auto fades or shift and X and there you go there's some auto fades in so I will do the same on the uh, the rack tom so we highlight them and put the cross fades in make sure and then another thing we do you don't have to do this but I do like to do it it's a fire lighter dose uh, what I do like to do is I like to merge the events in Pro Tools it's known as consolidate merge consolidate whichever and we just merge those two so we just get in one big block and those cross fades are baked in and then as well or those auto fades and then we can either leave it there or stretch that out we can do the same for that as well merge and then let's just edit this last one out delete that delete that put some cross fades in and then merge it and just to make things look nice and neat we will bring it all the way out just to make everything look nice and neat so we now we've done all that the toms will sound a bit like this The minute they are still a little bit quiet i may may just raise the volume up on those a little bit so that's just a little bit of tidying up on the um on the toms just to just to give you a bit of headroom so we'll have a look at these three kick drums to start off with so this first one is a kick consolidated we've got a condenser and that's a sub kick and i know glenn likes to have at least two or three mics on his kick drums so the plan of action is i think um so have, have a listen to them individually yeah so what i'm going to do this middle one that's going to be my main sort of kick sound if you're the sort of meat of the kick this consolidated one i'm gonna have that as the top end kick and the sub i'm gonna have that as the low end so since this is going to be the uh, the main kick 
there isn't a lot of bleed on this. Oh, am I going to put a gate? No, I don't think I'm going to put a gate on there. Start off with, since we're using our personas, that's all we're going to use. We're going to bump some EQ. Now, normally, I don't put any low and high pass filters uh, on the kick drum if I've just got the one mic. But since we've got three mics, I am. This first one, I'm uh, round about to about 100, 90, 100. And uh, then bring the high pass filter down to about about 4k and then all I'll do is just cut some of the uh, the boxiness out of this. But all I've done is just notched a bit of the uh, the lower mids and some of the sort of upper mids, if you will, sort of 1.7k. So without any EQ on, bypassed, it sounds like this. And with that EQ on. Yeah, we are missing a lot of low end, a lot of top end. It sounds as though it's got a bit of a blanket over it, if you will. But once we get these other two dialed, they should sound a little bit better. And then after that, I'm just going to dial in some compression. Dial in a little bit of compression. We, we're getting about 7 to 8 dB of gain reduction in there. So next, we'll have a look at this consolidated kick drum. As you need, there's quite a bit of bleed coming in from that snare. Now, before I start adding any gate to that, I am going to put some EQ on first. See, we're just using this for top end, so got high pass filtering going into about two, two and a bit K, and just putting in a little bit of a boost there at 7K. And just to uh, add some harmonics to that, I am going to add the red light distortion plugin because you're adding distortion back in. It sort of distorts everything. It adds some low end back in, although not too much by the sounds of that. But I am just going to add a second EQ in there, about there. But I am going to put a high pass filter in, a uh, low pass filter in as well, around about 14k. And that same boost in there as well. With the first kick drum we dialed in, and this one, that's what these two sound like together. We are still getting a little bit of bleeding from that snare, but I think I'm going to leave it in as it is. So this last kick drum, I'm just going to use for some low end. And as you see, it's just getting those sub frequencies. So to make some headroom in, put a high cut in there or a low pass filter. Yeah, that's all we're going to do with that. And all three together. So that's the kick drum sorted out. Like I say, we've got nothing going off on the uh, on the drums parallel going off at the minute, so that sound will alter. So we'll have a look at the uh, at the snare next. Yeah, that's a quite bright sounding snare. Well, first off, I am going to add that red light distortion in again, just to uh, just to give it a bit of character and perhaps to try and tame them peaks down a little bit. And then after that, some EQ. So as this is a snare, it's quite actually it's quite a bright sounding snare. We'll just take that extreme top end off, and then we'll just try and dial out some of the some of the boxes and the honk out all i've done there is just taking some of that boxiness out of the mid-range and a bit out at 4k as well that was just annoying me a little bit and then after that i'm just going to dial in some compression so with this being a snare we can actually be a bit more heavy-handed on the compression on this one so yeah just dialing a bit of compression there in on the uh, on the snare 
So we're getting about 7 dBs or so of gain reduction. Now on this second snare, this is the, uh, the bottom snare. Uh, since I've got the, the, the meat of the snare coming from the actual main snare, all I'm going to use this for is just that top end sizzle. I have passed filter in there, I'm not going to be shy. It's about around about 900, uh, 9,500 9, 9, 1k. And then after that, just going to add some saturation and some compression. And then together, those snares sound a bit like this. Right, next, I'm going to have a look at these toms in there. Let's have a listen to these toms. So, first off, we're going to add some saturation in there. Uh, we're just going to dial this first tom in. Put a basic ILO pass filter in to start off with. Um, then some compression so to start off with i'm just gonna copy all those same settings across because the same setting I've, sometimes i find the same settings work across all three toms let's see what they sound like with the rest of the drums last one i can actually i think i can bring that I pass filter down a touch. So up next, I'm going to dial in these overheads. So first off, I'm just going to add some saturation in there, some distortion. So we'll get our same red light distortion plug in up. So I'm just adding some subtle saturation in there. And next, so I'm EQ. Uh, with these V symbols, we don't need a lot of low end in there, so. We're not going to be shy. Let's get them out. So at the minute I'm just going to leave it at that. I say I may add a compressor in there and then put these either straight to the drum stem or to the uh, the main fader. Uh, next the room I'm going to add that same saturator. Luckily there doesn't look to be too much in the way of kick drum coming through there. So we've got that same EQ but just to Yeah, there's not too much kick. That's all I think Glenn does EQ some of this before he, he puts it up as a pack. But I'm going to take a little bit more out. I'm going to take some of that extreme top end. I'll see if we can get shut of those symbols. Maybe just add a shelf in there as well. So some of the symbols do come through, but they're not as bright and as harsh. And then I am going to add some compression into there as well. In two series, around about four to one. And uh, that just lopping some of the uh, the transients off the snare. And what I'm also going to do, just to try and make that room sound a little bit bigger, is I'm going to add some delay in there as well. This is the uh, what they call the the Steve Albini trick. All we're going to do is we're going to put a twenty millisecond delay on that rooms yeah to me it just just adds a little bit extra um for the hats and the uh the rides i'm just gonna I'm just going to add the same saturator and EQ in, but I'm just going to put that uh, local high pass filter, whatever you want to call it, in just a little bit less. So, next thing we're going to have a look at is this parallel compression. So, I've got 
all the shells going to this drums para bus here and then on there is the red light distortion just add some saturation and some compression parallel compression nailed in the drums sound are sounding a bit like this now so next we'll move on to the drums submix so I've already got me low and high pass filters dialed in just gonna dial this in a little bit and all I've done there just taking a little bit out of that boxing us out the uh, the lower mids and just down that a little bit out at 1.6k I'm gonna add a limiter in here as well here we go limiter just to if you will just to act as a little bit of a, a clipper so instead of true people I'm gonna have it on clip So yeah, got that dialed in. Just like I say, just it's just it's not quite adding adding any extra harmonics, but yeah, it's just acted a bit like a, a clipper, if you will, just to just to raise the volume up a little bit, just to try and bring that snare and kick out a little bit more. For the effects on the drums, I've got this drum distortion and this drums verb. We're gonna have a look at the verb first, and what we're gonna send to the verb is the snares. And the toms and what i like to do on the bottom snare i like to hear more of more verb than the actual bottom snare could be through so i'm gonna add some extra verb into them yep we're using the stock room reverb so let me just dial that in so i've just got it on a room reverb bit of pre-delay three seconds and and the mix at 100 and then after that i'm gonna just bang a little bit of EQ in there just to take that extreme top end off and then we've got this drums distortion and all I'm going to send to that is the actual shells is the I'm going to put a send from this drum submix to there the, that red lighting again I'm just add some and so and then just bring the level down a touch <laughs> so with these symbols I am going to send them directly to that drum stem I'm not going to bother with the um symbols for mix so i'm going to send them to set and i may even just send everything straight to the uh the main fade of the mix. but oh i'm going to leave it in at the um drum stem for now uh so i'm going to add a bit of compression into the symbols just to uh, tame the uh, sort of extreme symbol hits uh, yep yeah, just add a little bit of compression in there and i will add that compression to the uh the hats and the rider although you shouldn't need it it's just mainly for the hard crash hits so some of the processing or oh, that's all the processing i've done on the uh drums on this mix oh that's been useful to a couple of people <laughs> and uh, yeah come back tomorrow where we'll uh, we'll mix up some bass it's all about the bass baby so that's all for this video i'm gonna catch you on the next one <laughs> Right folks, I hope you enjoyed that video. You can follow me on social media and you can get my music online. And if you want to support the channel, there's a buy me a coffee and PayPal links. They're all down in the description. Click up here to subscribe and click the link down there for videos that you may not have seen. Keep it loud and keep it heavy.